Hi, welcome to The Game Spanner. I'm Jeff The Game Spanner, and today I'm Game Spanning Fort. So in essence, Fort is a deck building game. You start with 10 cards, two of them have these little stars, which mean they will always stay with you. The other cards may disappear, but probably won't, but may disappear throughout your turn. The idea of Fort is to get as many points as possible, just like many other games. But in order to do so, you will build up the level of your fort. These numbers are not given to you straight away. You only get them at the end of the game. So wherever your fort level is up to, that's how many extra points you would gain. There are cards that give you the ability to get points, which you will track here. When you upgrade your fort to level one, you get to add one of these cards to your hand, which have some end game scoring on them. There's a whole bunch available. At setup, we're putting out one for each player plus one extra. When you manage to upgrade your fort to here, you grab one of these three cards, same deal, with the number of them that are available. And the first person to get their token to here would get that card, which is an extra four points at the end of the game. You do not have to get to the end of the fort track in order to finish the game. The other way the game can finish is if one of the point markers gets to the 25. You see it's in red there. Once you get to the 25, we then finish the round, just like if you get here. Uh, we finish the round, so everyone else would get to take a turn depending on who the first player is, as marked by that card. And then we go into final scoring, which is gaining these points and any extra points that happen to come from the made up rule and obviously the extra four points for the first person who got to the top level and got the macaroni card so that's kind of the essence of the game other things that are on your board that you may have noticed is their spots we're talking about two types of resource there's toys which are the blue resource and pizza which is the orange resource Cards will cause you to take resources in, so you might put them in. If you take in an extra pizza, you'll put that in. Eventually, you'll probably find that you have that full up. What are those used for? I'm glad you asked. In order to move your level of fort from here to here, you'll need to turn in two of these markers, it doesn't matter which. To move from here to here, you need one blue and one yellow and one of something else. From there to there, is two yellow, two blue, and one of something else, three blue, three yellow, three blue, three yellow, and one of something else. There are also cards that are going to move stuff into your backpack. You can keep stuff in your backpack depending on what level of fort you're up to. So at the beginning, you can only have one thing in your backpack. If you're up to here, that's level three of the fort, you can have three plus one, so it's four things you can keep in your backpack. You also have the ability to store cards, and once again, you can only keep the number of where you're up to on the fort plus one. So at the beginning, you can only put one thing into the lookout. How do I know what I'm looking at? Because let's be honest about it, the cards are just icons. There's nothing that actually tells you what stuff means. So everyone has one of these cards that has the actions that are in there. So there's the different suits, things, modifiers, and then actions. And you'll find you'll probably look at that quite a lot, at least through the first couple of games to get an idea of how to, what's going on with each card. So how do you actually play? You start with five cards. The others are a face down pile. You look at those five cards and you choose one of them to play. You'll notice that on each of the cards there's a top and a bottom section. What you're looking at is, if I wanted to play that card, I could put these other cards with it. That then means that whatever's in the brackets here, multiplied by four, of course there's four of these cards, this is a wild card by the way at the back here. So I can do this four times as a public action. So that allows me to recruit a card, which is taking one of these cards that's available in the park, the top face down card, or if people have cards in their yard, you can take cards from there. Then add a toy to my stuff. If 
for each card. So I've got four cards total, which suddenly means that I can recruit four cards, then add four toys. Now, because no one has anything in their yard yet, I would recruit all three of them. They go face up, and then the fourth card is there. That's the public action, the top one. Then the bottom action allows me to recruit one more toy. I don't have space to put the toy in, so I'm not going to do that, or I can't do that. But that's a private action. Now that I've done that, everyone else at the table, in turn order, is allowed to look at their cards and go, ah, oh, I have one of those icons, which is this one. So they can discard that card to be able to recruit and take another card in. They can only do that once, even though this player did it four times. They don't refresh the number of cards they have, they just hang on to the four. And that's how many cards they will use when it gets to their turn. The other card that I didn't use now goes into the yard. Normally you'd put it face up that way, so upside down for you, so that everyone else can see it. But because everyone's on the same side of the, of the table, I'll just place that there. What that now means is when it's their turn, and they're recruiting, they can recruit from this card. Before you put these cards into your yard, you would recruit, you would recruit one card, and that is recruit from someone's yard, or the park, or the top card there, so they'll do that. Then any cards left over go into your yard. Any of the cards that you had that had that little star on the bottom of them, so if that was one of the cards in my hand, never goes into yard, it will always go into the recruit pile. Once you've done that, you then draw another five cards so that you've got a hand of five cards on the next player's turn. The park is then replenished and we continue on. Let's just really quickly go through what some of the meanings of these cards are so you can get an idea of what we're trying to do. So this card enables you to add stuff and that's a blank one which means it can be either pizza or Toys, if this is followed, whatever type of stuff you took, so if he takes pizza, for example, everyone else must also take pizza. They can't take toys if you've taken pizza. If it's a wild card like this, the person who's played it would then name what suit everyone else needs to follow with. This allows you to remove a card that's in your hand or in the discard pile. So I can kind of thin the deck down by doing that. Anything with the multiplication sign does exactly what you saw earlier with I'm playing two cards that are that icon or wild, which means I get two goods in, and here I get two blue goods if I wish to take that. Anything with a cross through it is you're actually paying for it from your stuff. So if this is what was played, there's two skateboards there. I would take two yellow in because I've got two of the skateboards, I could then pay one pizza for a point, or because I'm playing two cards, I could pay two pizzas for two points. And points are tracked on this board. This one's gonna give points for the number of items I've got in my pack. This one allows you to get stuff for any suit, so you could play that with those to be able to get three goods in. That marking, is talking about cards in your lookout. So the way you get cards into your lookout is put a card in your lookout, which is this marking. And th this marking is saying to take it from your hand to put in your lookout. So whatever you've got in your hand is what's available. Uh, it's really worthwhile to get that into your lookout and moving a card into your lookout just does that. While this is at level zero, I can only have one card in my lookout. Once I've got that moved up, I can then have a second card in my lookout. But that now counts towards any card that I'm playing. In order to move up, I would need to play this card. That allows me to move up in my fort value, but I've got to pay for it with pizza and toys when that one comes through to be able to move up. Once I've moved to here, I would gain one of these cards and whoever's there first obviously gets a choice of all of the cards. And I go, okay, I know what I'm working towards throughout the game. That stays face down so no one else can see it. The next player who does it would then get to have a look at the two that are left. And obviously once you move to here, you can gain one of these cards. Each of those cards has a different ruling on the bottom of it. When it gets back around to your turn, the first thing you do is take any cards that are in your yard and put them into your discard pile. There are a couple of markings I haven't dealt with at the moment, 
but they are all on this card, so that's pretty straightforward. I think that I've covered everything that needs to be covered for this game. It is relatively straightforward, even though there's a lot of iconography that doesn't necessarily make all the sense in the world. So, please go ahead and watch my game display to get a feel for how the game actually plays. If you have any comments or suggestions, please write them below. If you have any games that you would like to be gamesplained, please shoot me an email to thegamesplainer at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at thegamesplainer to keep up to date with the games I'm playing. Subscribe to my videos to keep up to date with the games that I'm gamesplaining. And until next time, enjoy gaming.